Well, we got a packed house, huh, fellas? Yeah. Every oh, microphone yeah. is filled. We got Chris Kerber. We have Hall of Famer Grant Fuhr here. Wow. How about, how about that? That is pretty awesome. And there's a movie about Grant's career called Making Coco, the Grant Fuhr story, and the filmmaker, producer, Adam Scorgi is here. <laughs> Man, packed house. And we yeah. saw the film last night, and congratulations. It's, it's amazing. Well, thank wow. you guys for coming. It is really, really good, so and good. it opens up in six theaters in the St. Louis area uh, come Friday. So you'll be able to see it at Marcus Theaters in De Pere, Chesterfield, Ronnie's, Arnold, O'Fallon, and St. Charles. And I really do recommend it. And you really do have a, what, what a career you've had. Uh, we've had a little bit of fun over time. Yeah. And, 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 it looked, and Chris, did you see the film? I have not seen it yet, no. There's not a scene where you're not smiling. Yeah. You're supposed to have fun, apparently. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the dry humor and stuff like that that you say through the entire film is some of the best parts of the entire film. Yeah. Like you started, uh, there was there's a part where you lose game one, and then you rip off 23 in a row, and your response to that was, yeah, I think we did pretty good after that. <laughs> That's, well, you know what? You're hoping for a long career, so you hope things kind of extend past that, and you, you don't want to get too excited. Yeah, I guess so. You're very, very level-headed. Very, very level. Well, even at the at the beginning of the of the of the film and how you how you got to be a goalie, how you it was so cold out. You're like, oh, I'm going to wear the most the most equipment. Most equipment, and nobody else wanted to do it. So, <laughs> plenty of ice time. <laughs> Job security. <laughs> yeah, and you're on the ice the whole time. You get to play all the time. As as the goalie, he's you know you you're not taken out of the game. You're on the ice the whole time. They they forgot to mention that you get to freeze your feet every day, but. <laughs> 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 it's a hazard, hazard of the job. Works for anybody but Antonio Brown. <laughs> but, <laughs> not that guy. <laughs> not that guy. Uh, and, and you're here in St. Louis for opening day. They, they put the banner up. I mean, as a former Blue, how cool was it to watch the Blues win the Stanley Cup last year? It was season? awesome. I mean, the city supported them for so long, and it's such a good fan base that we were hoping it would have happened about 20 years ago. But mm -hmm. to finally see it happen, there's no better fan base for it, so... It's going to be an exciting night tonight. Well, and, and, and in the film, you talk about, you know, the season where, you know, you got hurt in, in, the, uh, in the playoffs as a blue, you know, toward the ACL. And that could have been the year. It definitely could have been. I mean, that's as talented a team as I've played with. So uh, we, thought that, we thought that was our year, but it just didn't turn out that way. It could have been, 90, it could have been the 95-96 season. We were hoping. I mean, we, all the pieces were in place. We had toughness, we had scoring, we had guys that could check, we had good defense, so it was a year we could have won. That's a, that's, a, that's a shame how it ends like that. And who was the one that pushed? Uh, Kiprios. Uh, uh, oh, Pronger and Pronger Kiprios, pushed. Yeah. Lo lots of booze last night when Kiprios' face showed up on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of still rides the fence on whether or not he did anything on purpose or, or, or if it was Chris Pronger's fault, all that. It, it, said it, it came across like as he was really genuine in that he was very, very upset that he hurt Grant. Yeah. Like, he definitely was trying to rattle him again. Like, Grant was playing hot. I mean, to be honest, that Blues team started off pretty cold, and Grant was the one that bailed him out and then right. kind of woke the forwards up, and they came alive when, you know, during the playoff run. And when he said he, he's done that a million times, yeah, a million different but, goalies. And, and not hurt time. them, right? It's playoff he, hockey. Yeah. I mean, I've had guys fall on me thousands of times. And nothing's happened, so it's just one of those things. And and the guy that puts you out for the season, and you said at the beginning, you know, you were not, you we were not too happy with him. Yeah, a day or two afterwards, we were probably weren't really cheerful, but we're friends. So you're friends, you're yeah, friends yeah. now, which is uh, <laughs> which listen, you got to you got to move on. And again, and I don't want to, I don't want to like frame by frame of the movie, but just some of the stuff that blew me away. If you see the footage of you trying to walk off the ice. To where you got to stop and you're trying to hold yourself up. And then Pronger says you tried to throw a knee brace on and get back out there. <laughs> yeah, a couple days later, it didn't hurt as much. So I figured I might be able to make it work. But apparently you need ligaments and a knee to work. So. <laughs> <laughs> no doctor. But, now, listen, uh, I've read the whole... If, if, if you go over to... Uh, if you're in Dr. Lehman's office, um, you know, and, and I've got a daughter that I've taken in there quite a lot. You know, the, the, the newspaper article is still on the wall. I must have read it probably about 30 times. I mean, because I, I, I don't remember if it was Tom Wheatley or, um, or Dave Luking that, that wrote the article on it. But, I mean, it was literally almost like a medical journal article on your knee that they put in the post-dispatch. Yeah, there was a little gluing and such that they had to do to put it back together again, but not knowing any better, I figured I could probably still get away with it and play and put the gear on the one day and 
was great standing up, but as soon as you went down, you couldn't get back up. So, yeah. small Do you problem. think you could still put on the put on the equipment and play? I could put it on. I don't know what the play part <laughs> of it is. <laughs> How has the game changed since since when you played? It's gotten a little bit faster. I mean, I think things develop a little faster now. The athletes obviously are bigger and better. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the more it changes, the more it stays the same. You still have to try and put a puck in the net. So for from the goalie's position. It's starting to get back to where it was where goalies have to be athletic again because there's no hooking and holding. Mm -hmm. So guys are getting a little more room to move, and you're having to be athletic well, again. Well, the equipment's changed the way that... That's made it so much lighter. The, the, That's the biggest thing. Yeah, that the goalies are more nimble now. Yeah. The biggest uh, thing is that it's so much lighter. So guys are wearing it bigger. So goalies look bigger. They are bigger. They're still, I think the average size now is 6'3". So mm -hmm. they are bigger, but the equipment's so much lighter. Guys wear it bigger, and that's part of the issue they're having is trying to get guys to cut it back down. So the league still hasn't figured if you put some weight back in it, guys will cut it down on their own. Right. Um, I mean, just that the, the equipment's gotten better, that the uh, training has gotten better as well. Uh, so I'm sure that's changed a lot since when, for when you played. From when I started, oh, definitely. I mean, training when I started was find your bag, open it, and away you go. Uh-huh. And then by the time I was finishing my career, I spent a couple of summers here with Bobby Kersey. And it was not very much fun training. Well, well, I mean, in the documentary, in the documentary you, you talk about this after you know after uh, being with Edmonton so long, and then you come to the Blues, and Mike Keenan is your coach, and uh, Wayne Gretzky is the one that convinced Keenan to pick you up as the goalie. But you showed up to camp, and my, they said out of shape. No, my standard ten extra pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so not out of shape for you. You got to have something to lose as you get into the season, right? Keenan well, sent him home. I know. <laughs> well, you go through training camp, and you're going to lose weight during training camp anyway. But it gives you a reason to push yourself. So I'd always had 10 extra pounds going into training camp, and I like to play all the exhibition games. So by the time you hit January, February, guys are starting to get tired. You're still you're, fresh as could be. You're, you're in good so, condition at that yeah. point. You're peaking for the right part of the season. Well, Grant, I used to work for Bruce Landon, who was you know a goaltender yeah. in the WHA, right? And uh, and one of my all-time favorite people in this world. I go through a brick wall for this man, and because he he was the owner of our our team in Springfield that I worked for, and he would tell him stays. He would he'd go through the summer. He'd have the other jobs that he would have to work at the time, and then for about two weeks or sometimes even a week before camp would open up, he'd be in the attic wearing a hefty trash bag on the bike, trying to just get the pounds enough to make weight, and that's. That's kind of how some of the training get was done at that time. Yeah, that's all you had to do at the beginning. My first five or six years, you had to make weight. That was it. So they don't care how you make weight, just make weight. Well, when right. Mike Keenan sent you home, how much weight did you have to lose? Oh, I think I came back about three pounds lighter. <laughs> <laughs> In that first season with the Blues, you played 79 games. Yeah, so I couldn't have been in too bad a shape. 79 right. of 82 games, which amazing? is a record. Will anybody beat that record? I would think at some time maybe somebody. Chris is no. shaking his head. No, in today's game, I don't think it. I don't think it. They will. I don't think there's been a couple guys that got Brodeur to seventy four, seventy five. Yeah, I was gonna say Brodeur, I think twice played seventy seven. Yeah, I, I just don't know. Yeah, that, I just don't know that, that they're gonna let them do ago. it anymore. Yeah, you, know? that's a, you don't have a, a coaches like Heenan that would just put you in. Yeah, and, and, and there's times where he'd. Put Grant in. Grant let in a few. He'd pull them and then put Grant back in uh, in the third. That, that's yeah. not to say that the goalies can't. I just don't know that the coaches would well, do it. It's the mentality of the coaching now. They don't yeah. want to do it because they're afraid of guys getting hurt and that sort of thing. So they try and micromanage the goalie's load where, as a starting goalie, you want to play as much as you can. And sometimes coaches overthink it a little bit. Yeah. Hey, I've, I've, I've got to see if I, I get this first hand because I don't know that I've ever had a chance to ask you this. Can you take us into the locker room in that playoff series against Phoenix? Because the way the story has been relayed to me <laughs> is Grant Fear looked at everybody and said, just get me one, boys, and I, I got it tonight. Might, how, might is, is that, that accurate, or how can and you what, take what us into what this? really happened? This, is the, this would have been the 99 playoffs, okay. I believe, right? Uh, 98? 90, 97, 98? 98, yeah. yeah we game mentioned, seven. Game seven, so we played in Phoenix. And I may have mentioned before we went on the ice that one would be a good number, and we'll just work with it. <laughs> That's mentioned in the movie, too. And he yeah, made it, right? and yeah. made it hold. Yeah. And we managed to make it hold, so. And and was Mark Vergevin standing outside the bus on one of these days? Waving with waving, a wig on. With a wig on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was Verge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you played with the, with the best teams, arguably, you know, in history, those uh, Oiler teams. And, you know, Wayne Gretzky calls you the greatest goalie of all time. It's good to have in your back pocket. Yeah, no yeah, kidding. I think so. <laughs> no I kidding. would put that at the top of the resume. <laughs> Who was Brad the Hall said the same thing last night. Yeah, he did. 
that that uh, Grant Fear is the best goalie he's said, ever of all time. Well, hey, what, what, I forget the exact quote. It was like hands down. Said the best goalie the he's best ever goalie played he's with. Ever played. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. With a couple of expletives, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the best player you never played with? I mean, you played with Messier, you played with Gretzky. Who's the best player you never played with? Probably Mario Lemieux. Huh. But I actually I shouldn't say that. I got to play with him in Canada Cup, mm. so we'd have to go back a generation or two. So maybe Guy Lafleur. Huh. And was there anybody that scared you on the ice? Like you had that circled on the calendar going, man, we're going to play this team and this guy's going to be on the ice and this is a guy that, you know, has got my number. Who had your number? It's, nobody really has your number because games change every time you play somebody. But Al McInnes had one of the, probably the best shot at the time. Mm -hmm. And in Edmonton, we got to see him eight or ten times a year plus playoffs. So you're not really afraid of it because you see it every day. Mm -hmm. But he's the one guy you didn't want with a clear shot at you. Is right. he the guy that would actually leave a mark on your body even it, though you had it all left that a mark? Yeah. You didn't catch it; it left a mark. <laughs> you know, is it is it a, is it a hard, is it hard to live your life as an athlete? Uh, you know, it can be with the with the camera on you, uh, especially playing for Edmonton, but there's really not much else but boiler hockey. It's different. I mean, living in a fishbowl is a little bit different. Thank goodness, no social media back then. That was going to be my question. Is it? I mean, you got demoted because you called fans a jerk. I called fans stuck jerks. A foot. 18 years old, I stuck a foot in my mouth pretty good. Now, can you imagine having social media then, you know, having Twitter, having Facebook? I mean, no, I players have it different now. Yeah, it had been all over everywhere, but it managed to make the front page of the paper back then. So. <laughs> <laughs> the fact but, that he got demoted for that is, yeah. is amazing. I hey, mean, hey Adam, boy. You, you put together that great movie on the Enforcers, Ice Guardians. Yeah. That's right, yeah. and, and then, did Ice Guardians. Yeah, too. And, and then you moved into, into, into this one with Grant. What's what's fueling the passion to tell these stories the way you're telling them? Well, I'm a huge hockey fan, so um, and with the credibility of Ice Guardians, it kind of our, our director Don Metz and I had worked together on that, and he had brought him and Grant have been talking about this for a while. So they came to me, and they're like, "Hey, like, would you like to do Grant's story?" And I grew up watching Grant. I was an Oilers fan when I was young. I, I lived in Edmonton, so I was like, "Hell yeah!" But then you don't always know if there's the right story there. But then when you go into Grant's whole story and what he accomplished and the personal struggles, and you got to have conflict and resolution in order for it to really pay off in the end. So I was like, "Grant's got all the elements." And then when you meet Grant in person, you it's a film that you have to be passionate about a documentary. So once you meet Grant and the human being that he is, then so I was like, okay, we have to do this. And it's just been fortunate now that having done these two hockey docs, that like people are kind of like, well, you're the hockey doc guy. I'm like, no, but I will gladly take that if you keep on bringing hockey <laughs> stories, right? Like, I mean, Holly was joking last night. He's like, when are you doing the Hull story? I'm like, you tell me when, right? Well, <laughs> when did the Hull story That's story have still an being written. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what did you learn about Grant that... Grant won't tell us about himself. Uh, nothing. And I honestly mean that. Grant was so honest and open in this process. That's why the doc turned out so good. Um, it's a it's a nice level of trust. Um, I, we had it with Ice Guardians, too. You know, once I, once Kelly Chase came on as my producing partner and stuff. that, And, and you know, the way we do our interviews, that we really make it... We take a long time to set up, and it's really intimate and really open, so the guys can really share mm -hmm. and feel comfortable. Um, and and really, Grant is so comfortable in who he is now, and, and you know the past is what led him to be the man he is now. That it, he didn't. There's nothing hidden. That we, what what you see in a film that surprised you, like Glenn Sather not wanting to draft him, and right. and how yeah. the suspension all went down. Right when you're like, what? It was because he was honest and he admitted it that he got suspended. You're like, right. how does that work? Right. Yeah. All that stuff is the same. The that same stuff as a fan that the, shocks you, shocked us going through it. The the, the stuff about the drug use was, uh, I, I, you hear rumors and then you see the reality of it. Where you didn't fail a drug test. No. Like but, you were suspended for a season, but never failed a drug test. You failed an honesty test. Yeah. The, no. That's like. And how would you punish an athlete for that? Right. For yeah. being honest and and trying to come and get ahead of it and saying it. That was one of the parts when we were going into this as a filmmaker. You're like man, people are going to love him even more. Like, yeah. this guy took it on the chin, whereas nowadays you'd never talk to the athlete. They'd have publicists and managers yeah. and people blocking. Grant took it on the chin back in the day and just said, yeah, th this is what I did. I made a mistake. I want to move forward. I want to get back on the ice. I want to be the great player I am. And, and then just to see that he was punished the way he was is... Probably why the NHL doesn't love me the most <laughs> these days. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, you know, it was not glorifying drug use. I mean, you never, you know, again, you never failed a drug test, which was, is the big misnomer. You know, oh man, he must have failed this drug test and you know, huge cokehead. You're like, I wasn't a, a cokehead. I wasn't, I wasn't an addict. Just did it every once in a while. No, you know what it was? 70s and 80s. People were trying different things and 
the crowd I ran with at that time were trying different things, so we went with the crowd. You know, the, the way that I, uh, after watching it last night, the way I, that particular part of the movie, the way I looked at it was, if I'm out drinking and I get pulled over for a DUI or something, and I get in trouble for it, which I should. That doesn't mean I'm an alcoholic. I just got caught doing it. That wasn't even that. It doesn't it's mean you like you're doing Jeff, it Jeff, you wouldn't time. even have been pulled over. It's I. It's you telling somebody that you were drinking and driving and getting in trouble <laughs> right. for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not even getting yeah. pulled over for it. It like, doesn't mean you were doing it all the time. No. Like the story all our parents told us where the police used to pull them over and be like, okay, you're drunk, now drive right home and I'm going to follow you, right? <laughs> 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 Uh, what made you so hard to score upon? Probably just competitiveness. I mean, I didn't like to be scored on. So it didn't matter. didn't have to be pretty as long as I could get in the way somehow. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it was good technique. Sometimes it wasn't good technique. You're just trying to be an athlete and get in the way. Yeah. And what, what Have you talked to Jordan Bennington? I haven't had the chance to talk to Jordan yet. Uh, what would you tell him? Like, is there any advice you would give him as as the, you know, the... The veteran, the Hall of Famer, to this up-and-coming kid who, you know, he's got he's got a, now a Stanley Cup, and and he's got the city on his shoulders now, and and people wondering if he's the real deal. I would tell him to enjoy it, and not worry about what other people think. I mean, you're going to have some guys that are say, well, it was a flash in the pan, this and that. He's a good goalie. And he's got a great calm demeanor, and I would tell him just be yourself. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest thing, just play. Yeah, you think players now just get in their heads too much? Oh, yeah. They get in their own heads, and that's really a problem? That's part of the problem. These guys start to doubt themselves. They lose confidence, and confidence is everything. So you try and tell them to just trust themselves. And I know in the documentary you talk about, you know, playing golf. I mean, you played golf. I might have played a little bit. You played golf <laughs> the day of a, a, a Stanley Cup final game. Um, day before. All right, the day before. And what was it? You played 48 holes? No, I might have played 54. <laughs> <laughs> but the line is... But the line is you would have played more had it not gotten dark out. Yeah. Yeah, so, many, so many hours in a day. <laughs> some, some reporter was trying to call him out on it. Hey, why were you playing all this golf? Why did you play this many rounds? Because the, the sun went down or else I'd have kept playing. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's kind of a Jordan Bennington answer, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, very, the way very much so. Yeah. Hey, so you and Darren Pang are out on a golf course. If we mic'd you guys up and then filmed filmed the round. We'd have a lot of laughs. Yeah, oh, absolutely. As good as the the golf would be, would the conversations be as entertaining or the golf as competitive as you guys can get? Probably both. The golf yeah. would be the golf would be okay, the conversations would be great. Because you guys should still get competitive when you guys are out there. Oh, no, we still have fun. There yeah. may be a dollar to exchange. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, now, I know, uh, you know, at the end of the doc, you said, and by the way, the documentary is called Making Coco, The Grand Fear Story. It's going to be shown at six theaters in the St. Louis area uh, for a week. So that's at the at the Marcus Theaters, uh, De Pere, Chesterfield, Ronnie's, Arnold, O'Fallon, and St. Charles. At the end, you said you want to get back into, not as a player, but back into hockey as a coach maybe right now you're a, you're the what the uh director of golf director of golf at a golf course <laughs> look at yeah. the smile on his face as soon as he says that why is grant fewer not a coach i did that for 10 years after i played and then i just got out of the game to give it a break just to see what other things there were in life try something different and mm -hmm. got convinced to jump into the golf world somehow i'm not sure how i did that but had some fun with that but i still have a love for hockey so, so you ready? Are you ready? You know, if somebody asked you to be a coach, would you? You know, you well, want to get back heartbeat. on there? Yeah, I do it in a heartbeat. And they're doing it. Yeah. I mean, imagine this guy wow. training your, your 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 rookies. Listen, I'm going to tell you real quick one of my favorite Grand Fear stories. So uh, we were about to we were waiting to do a game in St. John, New Brun uh, St. John, New Brunswick, and the Calgary Flames said you'd come down to to St. John for a conditioning game. Or two, and so I'm like, oh my gosh, here's a chance to interview Grant Fear, and he, mm -hmm. he was awesome. So I did an interview with him before that game. You know, it was in St. Louis, and I'm like, oh my god, I got to meet Grant Fear, and I get to do this interview. But here he's getting ready for the game. But because what happens when a player would come down, especially you know, a, a Hall of Famer, a future Hall of Famer, just went coming down. The number of people that were walking up to him just even right before the game, can you make sure you sign this stick? Can you and and it was it was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen because it was absolutely absolutely and it it transcended just a game that he was getting ready for. It was just it was a cool moment to see in a you know in, in a small town up in St. John, New Brunswick. That was it was a neat thing to watch. That's going back a while. 
I'd, I'd forgotten all about that, actually. Yeah. yeah two guys, I mean, even, even during the interview, people were just kind of sticking sticks in. And, 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 just, and I didn't miss a him. beat during the interview. Yeah. And stuff. It was you, really you cool. You will see this yeah. side of him when you watch the film. But I did something with you a million years ago. Like, remember, like, Sticks Baron Fuller, a famous bar or something yes. like that, yeah. where you were doing something and I was the broadcaster there. So we're sitting next to each other at a table. And there was a line of probably a 1,000 people. And I kept joking you, oh, do you, are these people here for you? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> but it was like a two-hour thing. And the line was four hours long, and dudes stayed there and signed every single yep. thing. Every well, single thing. I, Hockey I, players are the best. I really recommend seeing this thing. Is it going to hit Netflix at any point? or It's going to be releasing uh, on most platforms down the road, but uh, you know, we're really trying to encourage people to go to the Marcus Theater because it is very tough to get a documentary in theaters nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, so really cool that Marcus Theater stepped up, and it was because of the Blues' magical run this last year, and hockey's popular, and obviously you know, Grant's, you know, well respected in the city, so but it yep. will be going in late October. It will be available on iTunes, Google, and Amazon, all those different things, and maybe Netflix down the road. They've changed their platform quite a bit. So. Well, you can see Ice Guardians on Netflix. Yeah, Ice Guardians is on there. I think for at least another eight months or so, and then that license will be up too. But well, uh, it's an honor to have Grant Fuhr on the studio. Yeah. It's it's like See in the movie, and it's nice to have you too, Chris. And, and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, thank you. Opening <laughs> night tonight, Grand Fuhr. It's the it's making Coco the Grand Fuhr story. See it at Marcus Theaters uh, starting Friday and running a week. And then uh, if you can't make it out, maybe uh, check Netflix. Yeah, or we'll October, you know. iTunes and, and Amazon and Google Play and all those things that will hit up it later on in October. Well, thank you guys all for coming in. Well, thanks for having thank us. You.